morning, my name is David Cash and welcome to the first episode of Fast Fashion. This is a brand new show that I'm starting on my YouTube channel and uh, today we have a very special guest, our first guest. Uh, this is Astrid. Astrid is a model, stylist, makeup artist extraordinaire. She does a whole bunch of other things. Uh, and yeah, she has a couple questions for us today. Uh, this show is all about answering your fashion questions. So today we're going to be starting that off with Astrid. So hey Astrid, why don't you just introduce yourself, tell them a little bit about you and uh, why you're here today. Hello, I'm Astrid. Uh, as David said, I do a lot of stuff. I don't even know how much stuff I do. <laughs> I, can, I can relate. I, yeah, I wear many different hats. Uh, today I have this one. <laughs> but um, I had a couple questions kind of about how I could turn my Instagram page into maybe a website or a blog or something that would be a little easier to kind of monetize, but also sure. easier to kind of put out the content that I want to put out for myself. Sure. So if you guys don't know, Astrid, like many of you probably, has a following online, particularly on Instagram. That's where she's, I guess, had most of your attention, yeah. uh, etc. Uh, and in live events, etc. She's been published, all those kinds of things. But mm -hmm. right now, mainly I'd say you're on Instagram, yeah. right? And, and what you really want to do is take that following on Instagram and bring it to a second source. Yes. So maybe you can tell everybody before, like, like you've worked for some papers and stuff, more traditional media. Yes. Um, and, but now you're trying to move away from that, maybe explain a little why. Yeah, I've been involved in kind of the local fashion scene for a while. Um, I started writing kind of like freelance journalism stuff for my school's fashion magazine. Um, I had a column where I would kind of go to different uh, like people that are in the industry and kind of interview them in a way where I was not only kind of like finding out what they actually do, but also kind of adding like a different voice to it. Like I once interviewed um, a woman who runs a vintage shop actually right down the street that I used to work at. And we weren't only talking about the business, we were also talking about like how difficult it is for a woman, particularly like a woman of color to make it in the vintage game, which is very hardcore, especially in the city. Uh, so I kind of really like to explore different themes in my writing that aren't just kind of puff pieces. Sure. Like I kind of want to have a, something with a little bit more substance. And I find that that's difficult to do on Instagram yeah. where like nobody's really going to read your long thing. Nobody really yeah. cares. They only care about the image. Then they like it and scroll by. Totally. So I kind of wanted to have a place to like kind of do the same thing. Um, as someone who does have a bit of a following on Instagram, uh, I'm sometimes sent things for free to promote, and that's awesome, and it's very fun, and it's happened to me a bunch of times. Um, but the most recent thing that came to me was this custom-made little suitcase, and I just thought that it was so incredible that this woman spent all this time making something for me yeah. for free, and it was a really nice case. Like it was like a vintage case with like a satin lining and. And pockets. you wanted to do more than just. Yeah, like <laughs> I I wanted to kind of show my appreciation in a way that may actually help her, as opposed to just like holding it up, flashing a pic, being like thanks, and then just yeah. kind of sending it off. And I maybe. Somebody buys it, maybe they don't, but like yeah. that's kind of the end of that relationship. Yeah. yeah, and I figured that like since I write as well and I kind of like to cover things like that, I might be able to kind of start maybe like a website or a blog or somewhere no, that I can sure. actually go a little more in depth about these amazing things that I'm receiving in a way that is interesting to people. Totally. So, I mean, this is really what I wanted to talk about today in today's video. Yes. Um, like, as we've, it sounds like a, a lot bigger than it maybe is, but <laughs> as we've shifted from the, the 90s to the 2000s to now, mm -hmm. um, the biggest term that's kind of been floating around is fashion blogger or blogger. And what does that mean? And that's had a lot of different definitions over the past. 10 20 years mm -hmm. because you know 20 years ago that meant you had a blog and people came to it and you did SEO and you sold ads on your blog and that was your space on the internet now really people's blog or what they have as their main kind of I guess like domain on the internet is their Instagram page mm -hmm. or the social media account that they're most active on so this is kind of a, an issue that a lot of people have a lot of people like you will start writing for school papers I know I definitely did, definitely did that when I was in my undergrad um, either that or doing like a medium blog or something where you do a blog on a site that already exists um, however you it's inevitable that at some point in doing that you will run into the same problem that you kind of have found right now mm -hmm. where you're releasing all this content but it's all just kind of being put in one place and you don't feel any personal I guess benefits from it because it's not your site that is yeah. being posted. so I guess the first question uh, for you and anybody else watching in this kind of predicament is do you have a website 
Um, like, a, like a domain of your own, .com, that people can go to, Astrid Sedgwick or something? Not really. Okay, so, I mean, that's, I, I think, step one. Yes. Basically, basically the shift that you have to make is it's almost bringing back that kind of 90s mentality to now, mm -hmm. but integrated in, integrating it into your current social media posting schedule. So, for instance, uh, if you get uh, an item uh, sent to you in the mail or something like that, especially if it's a custom item, instead of maybe what you used to do being, like, make an Instagram post and maybe even write an article about it for your school's paper, mm -hmm. I think a shift has to happen. If you have your own website, you can start doing something called a sales funnel. Uh, and this can be for you or this can be for them. And essentially what that means is when you post on Instagram, instead of writing a whole caption, you write a small caption and then you direct them to your website where you have a blog post. Mm -hmm. And the whole, and I'll, I'll explain this a little bit more in more depth, but the sales funnel is basically post goes to blog post and then blog posts can go directly, since you're already online at that point, can go to their website, can go to their store. And it's a lot easier to make multiple links and you can do things like that, do direct like HTML links where people can click mm -hmm. in your blog and go to their website, kind of maybe what you used to do with your school's paper. Mm -hmm. But you can do that all on your own domain and in your own site and people never leave your kind of space on the internet, you know what I mean? And that's a big shift going from your Instagram page to somebody else's store, which has nothing really to do with you at that point unless you have an affiliate link or something like that. But if, if you move them from your web page to your web page, then to their web page, then you are the trusted source where they get that information from. Right, and it, and it adds more authority. They call that web authority. It adds more web authority to yourself, to your brand, to what you're doing. And also the biggest part, in my opinion, about starting a blog on your website is even if you only have like, I don't know, maybe one page about about you and one page of photos of you, maybe a portfolio. In your case, you could probably have more because you have makeup, styling, modeling, all these different things you can put pages on. Kind of like what I do. I have a lot of different things on my website, but Regardless of that, the, the blog aspect is almost the most exciting because that will give you uh, people coming to your page often and automatic SEO. So when you have a website, something that a lot of people who own websites might know, is the easiest way to build your web authority or uh, get more people to come to your site based off Google searches or based off other searches on Bing and other uh, search engines mm -hmm. is to have backlinks attached to your site. Now I know this is a lot of new vocabulary and stuff, yeah. but essentially what that means okay. is other sites that link to your website, yes. whether pages on your website, etc. So when you have a blog, that automatically makes it more, it makes it e that automatically makes it easier for people to link to your site. Because if you share a blog post about a brand, mm -hmm. that brand's going to share that link. Some of your fans are going to share that link. You're going to share that link, and automatically you're building backlinks and building authority to your website mm -hmm. automatically. So if you do that repeat, like on a, on a repetitive basis over like once a week, twice a week, once a month even, over the course of a year or over the course of several months, you'll build web authority without even trying because you're sharing your own links on a different platform. Mm -hmm. And if anybody else shares them from that, you're just sharing your name even wider and, and making your website rain higher on Google. So then people, when people even search like Toronto stylist, you might come up or Toronto makeup artist, you might come up. And those are huge keywords that pay, people pay a lot of money to rank within. But if you have a blog and you're already popular on one social media network, sometimes that can do it all for you. Mm -hmm. So I guess I know that's a lot of information, but do you have any kind of like questions about how you might be able to do that or how that might work? Because I know a lot of people are probably in similar, similar yeah. parts. Um, yeah, it's, it, it is just kind of like a whole new world situation sure. where like you really don't know a lot of this stuff. Um, but one question that I do have though is like, what would the preferred medium for my website be? Like, will it look less professional if it's like, if it's like my name dot Wix dot com? Or sure, like this is this is something that I've I've helped a lot of clients with. Also, my boyfriend with. I recently bought him a, a website. Mm -hmm. um, and there's there's a million. We're, we live in a cool age because there's a million different options in terms of websites. Squarespace. Uh, Squarespace. I, I will say the two that I personally endorse. They don't yes. pay me, but I endorse. Um, well, I guess one of them technically does, but not like directly. And it's not a sponsorship thing. Um, <laughs> is Squarespace and Shopify. If you if you want the easiest website to possibly run, it's a little bit more expensive than some of the other options, but I personally think I use it for my website, I use it for a lot of my clients' websites. Squarespace is the easiest to run for like a portfolio site. And then Shopify is if you're a designer, if you have a store, if you have a product, that is the easiest e-commerce store platform in my personal opinion. Um, but it's, it's a lot easier than that. It's funny because this is a skill set that even though it sounds pretty like something that a lot of people know, uh, it's kind of lost even in your generation, even in a lot of my generation, because I grew up in the 90s, but you didn't really grow up in the 90s. No. And like yeah. you never really experienced that kind of like, uh, you know, computer to sell transition. You almost kind of like grew up within it. Yeah. So I, I mean, like 
basic things like you have to sign up for a domain separately. You go on GoDaddy or one in one. There's a whole bunch of sites. I can leave some in the description. There's a whole bunch of sites. You go buy a domain. That's one thing. You can actually get them really cheap right now. It's just a thing. A lot of sites are doing promotions. I got mine and a bunch of my clients for like 99 cents for the first year. Literally. Wow, like nothing. Okay. Like you, it's way cheaper than you think. I and thought then, you were gonna say and then, $99. No, the 99 cents for the first year. And what I did, just because like sometimes you'll notice with domains, um, people will buy them if they're successful, meaning that if you use a domain and you only buy it for a year and your site blows up, somebody might buy it and then charge you the money that they bought it for. So that's a no sketchy. It's like kind of like property. But uh, what I do with a lot of my businesses is I'll buy it for like five years and that'll be like 10 bucks. And it's just like, okay, nobody can touch it for the next five years. Mm -hmm. If something happens, I'll buy it for longer. But like, I'm not even saying you have to do that. If it's a personal website, you can literally just buy one year, 99 cents, make it nice. Maybe next year you have to pay like $10 or something, but mm -hmm. do it, you know, make it happen. And then yeah. Wix honestly isn't a bad option, mm -hmm. uh, especially to start but there's a lot of other options out there. So I'd say explore your options. Uh, one thing with Wix is if you pay under a certain amount, they do have a cheaper option, but even though you will be able to link your personal domain, so basically you need your domain, then you need your hosting. Mm -hmm. So Wix is a hosting platform and they also allow you to build your site on it, like Squarespace and like a lot of these other ones. So with Wix, you can pay a little bit less if you don't want to spend a lot of money on it, at least at first, maybe when you're just trying this out mm -hmm. and they'll let you use your own personal domain, but they'll have a little banner at the top of the page that says, this is a Wix website. And that's okay. You know, it's a, it's a teeny bit less professional, but yeah. when you're near the beginning of your career, that honestly doesn't matter. And if you're saving, you know, 50 bucks or something, maybe that's worth it for you. But mm -hmm. you can also explore the different options, you know, for maybe like a hundred bucks a year, you can get um, an option where that's not a thing. But then also if you're going to be paying a hundred bucks a year, you might even look into Squarespace because I think it's like 140 or something for a basic plan. Mm -hmm. um, and something like Squarespace allows you to do everything, including integrating your blog, everything all in one place. And I think Wix does that too. Uh, but I know Squarespace has a really natural platform for that. I do know that there uh, are some websites, like I'm currently taking a social media class and we have to build our own website. And our teacher recommended like Weebly and Blogger be sure. because you can use Google Analytics for free. Cool. Whereas with other sites, you would have to pay for the analytics. Yeah. I just want to know like when I get those analytics, if I'm paying for them or not, kind of like what can I do with them? Sure. And does it really like matter if I pay for it or not? Like, sure. is there some difference? So this is a big aspect of it. Uh, yeah. Some people might not know if you don't run a website, but Google is kind of it in terms of the internet ads, AdSense, AdWords, all of these different things you may have heard floating around. All of these are owned by Google. So analytics, in terms of Google analytics, essentially just tells you what terms are searched for to find your site, mm -hmm. which sites, which pages within your website are visited the most, and where people are coming from. Mm -hmm. and who they are, like, wh like whether that be a site or whether that be a country, it gives you data on the people visiting your website. Mm -hmm. So that's actually very useful if you have a blog because you can see which blog posts attracted more people, which blog posts attracted fewer people, where they came from. Maybe you shared it on Facebook, maybe you shared it on Instagram, mm -hmm. maybe one of those two brought in more people than the other ones. And this is the kind of things that, and these are the kinds of things that analytics tell you. Yes. Uh, so they're very useful. I will also say that most uh, web platforms, I'm not discounting Weebly and the blogger. Oh, that, might be a, that might be a great, option. I haven't tried it personally myself, but if your teacher recommends it, I'm sure it will be, it, it would work, you know? Yeah. Um, but uh, I will say a lot of the different um, web platforms like Squarespace, Wix, they'll also have some kind of deal with Google since Google's kind of it in terms of the internet. Mm -hmm. So since that platform gives you free AdWords, a lot of the other ones will give you free, uh, like a hundred dollars in free AdWords credit, mm -hmm. meaning that you get free promotion, like free advertising on Google. Oh, so, cool. so every different site will have some kind of promotion. Mm -hmm. um, and I'd say that's also something for everybody to look into as you're deciding on which website you want to use, which platform you're going to go ahead with for hosting. Just, you know, see what's best for your site because an e-commerce platform is going to have very different needs than a blog is going to have very different needs than a portfolio site. But in my opinion, at least for you, and it sounds like what you're looking to do, even if you are going to create a portfolio site in your class, mm -hmm. it's probably just as useful to make that also be a blog yeah. because you can link more people back to that. How can I hypothetically like monetize these analytics? Okay, I'd say analytics aren't something you can necessarily monetize in and of themselves. Analytics are just data. It's yeah. just raw information about what's going on. The way you can monetize it is uh, monitoring specific actions. Mm -hmm. So for instance, if you have, if you posted a blog link and one of the ways that you share that is through Instagram swipe ups, mm -hmm. you can see how many people are coming through from Instagram swipe ups. And that might be a very useful piece of information for you to have later on when you're partnering with a brand for money and yes. they're going to say, how many times do you have an, how many Instagram swipe ups do you get? And they're going to pay you based on that potentially. Usually it's based on your following or based on your likes or based on another piece of like more raw data that they can access. Yeah. But sometimes they'll ask you to send screenshots of some other piece of data. Yes. Maybe that's your, maybe that's the back end of your Instagram, your, your, your analytics on your Instagram. Mm -hmm. Maybe that's literally that, a, a screenshot of your swipe ups. 
But once you have that kind of information, you can send that to people you're working with, and that's how that can translate to money. You can say, I get this, so this is worth that much money. I do think that is kind of the way things are going, especially totally. since like likes are kind of hidden now. Yeah. Like in most places, like I haven't asked to do that before. No, of course, and, and like having worked with a lot of advertising myself, both mm -hmm. behind the camera and in front, you know, I used to be an actor, I've also done some work as an influencer, but I'm mainly a camera guy. Um, but I see this all the time, you know, people will ask for screenshots of what's going on behind the scenes because it's not so visible these days. You know, unless you're a creator account on Instagram, you can't see likes. So yes, most people can't. And nowadays, you're, they're just gonna ask you to tap the insights at the bottom and take a screenshot. Because, That's really what it is? Yeah. Unless you're a creator? Unless you're a creator account. I didn't know that because like other people can't see them and I could and I had yeah. no idea. You know, how, you know how once you got a little thing with a star next to your name and it says you're a creator account now? Yeah. You can pick between business creator and this? Yes. So that's basically, the, I have that as well. If that, um, that's, not, I guess, a different topic, but kind of related. Yeah. Um, that's for people who regularly create content on the app and it's just a different uh, account format. So they're the only ones that can see like. Yeah. I just learned something new. Right now. <laughs> I'm also learning about, like a lot of new stuff. <laughs> <laughs> no, for sure. I mean, uh, also something to touch on, I guess, a lot of people who um, were prob probably being in a situation where you're in a class where somebody's making you create a website or do something for a business or some hypothetical, mm -hmm. what I used to always do in my undergrad and what really worked for me is just take that and you do it for something you're doing in your real life. Mm -hmm. Because otherwise, A, you're not going to be passionate about the project whatsoever. You're going to make something that's complete shit. Yeah. And B, why not use the grade to get something good for your life? Because if you're, yeah. you're going to be striving to get a high grade in a class, mm -hmm. you might as well you know, make it a double whammy, make it mutually beneficial for you and your prof. And right? They, they like, get their grade, you get your website, boom. Yeah, <laughs> and like since I'd be spending so much time on it anyway, it just seems exactly. like a logical thing. So that, that's what I did for one of my company's websites for customs. Remember the first time I did a website for that? That was literally for a class. <laughs> I had to do like a website. And I was like, okay, I'm gonna go really hardcore and you know, design a whole ass website. But mm -hmm. it paid off and then I had a company and everything, but yeah. Um, and I think the, a big thing that should be noted for this kind of thing is that Anybody these days, and this is something I really promote with my own business, anybody can create a business online, and I believe that. Uh, especially if you're an influencer already and you have some kind of a following, turning that, your personal brand, into an actual brand is way easier than starting from scratch. Yes. So when people are looking, and even, even people like you, when you're looking for stylist gigs or makeup artist gigs, I'd say it's easier to start at home first and try to find passive income in some way, shape, or form. And maybe for you that means starting a blog and putting ads up on that blog. Mm -hmm. And maybe that's gonna be how you start getting income coming in because currently with your you know, with your Instagram, you're not making any money unless it's a sponsored post, mm -hmm. right? But if you have a blog, I, I don't know if I mentioned this earlier, but with a blog, you can literally, as you're bringing these, this traffic over to your site, once you build substantial traffic, this is maybe why I didn't mention it initially, because you do need to build actually substantial traffic, kind of like YouTube views to get this, but you can start getting the same way as people watch ads on YouTube, you see ads on the sides of your website, and you can get that through Google AdWords, and it's like I said, if you have a, squ a Squarespace site, they'll give you $100 of that for free, mm -hmm. and you can put those ads on your site, anybody who clicks them, you make money. I was just about to ask about yeah. that. So here, yeah, I guess maybe you have any other questions in that kind of terms, like, like how do I make that make Sense. Yeah, like if I do run ads on my website, do I have any control over like what is shown or could sure. it just be something totally random like um, horse riding lessons? There are a few different ways to do this. <laughs> Google AdWords will generally, unless you change something in the settings, mm -hmm. will generally just promote what the uh, person on the other end is most likely to enjoy. Mm. So ideally, uh, when you have a niche following like you, I'd say most of your fans are fashion, makeup, beauty industry, maybe so like entertainment industry specific. Yeah. So for them, I'd say people coming from your Instagram, that won't be an issue because the ads that they're gonna see coming from Google will probably be on brand, mm -hmm. some kind of thing like that, whoever's paying Google at the moment. Um, but if you wanna have a little bit more control because obviously if somebody who likes guns comes on your page, they're gonna see an ad for guns because that's how Google works. Then, it'll it'll yeah. promote things that you like and then to, like to you. One screenshot and it's just Yeah, like, but I mean, but also at the same <laughs> at the same time, like they, people know that you have no control over that. Mm -hmm. And that's something I feel like people have to be, like don't be so worried about that. But at the same time, um, there are third party affiliate sites um, and you may have heard the word affiliate floated around for a long time. Okay. What it used to mean before people had huge followings and stuff is that you would share a link which would click back to a site 
and then you would make money in that process per click, mm -hmm. um, which is still kind of a CPC, you'll hear that coming up to cost per click or something like that. You hear that language still exists today because it was like the original language. Um, but essentially what that means is there's sites that you can pay for if you know that you have traffic coming to your site. For anybody who clicks through, they will pay and then you can pick which companies you promote oh. on those kinds of sites. But I will say that a lot of those sites are a little bit dated, so I wouldn't necessarily recommend them. I'm sure there's a few examples. I might put some down in the, in the description. I know I was aware of a few of them maybe like five years ago, mm -hmm. but currently I don't use any of those. Yeah. So, but that, that being said, I don't promote on my website because it's a portfolio site. But if you have a blog, then it makes sense to promote it on it. Yes. So, yeah. But I could have like my blog and my portfolio site kind of be the same, just like yeah. different pages. No, for sure. Stuff. And also if it's like, if you are if you consider yourself already like a fashion blogger, like I'd say you do, like you are in like the essence of what that means, right? Like you, you go to fashion events, you go to fashion designers and you write and document their process in some way, shape or form, mm -hmm. right? So if you want to continue kind of that aspect of it, I feel like there's no shame in putting ads on your website because mm -hmm. YouTube has ads. Yeah. You know, anybody who makes YouTube videos, even if they have ad block, they still have ads on their videos. They don't have a choice. Mm -hmm. So if you're releasing content, be shameless, you know, yeah, whatever. That, that's how it that's how it works. And yeah. especially if you're sharing content and making connections with people with content that they like and about things that are relevant to them. It sounds like you're like you said, you don't want to just create another fluff piece. Mm -hmm. You want to create something more. Yeah. So yeah, I'd say Pete, that's uh, transparency goes a long way. Mm -hmm. And if you, you know, like this video, if you mention that kind of stuff on the internet and let people know like what you're about mm -hmm. that and in your blog posts, then uh, yeah, I wouldn't worry about advertising. Make that money. Yes. You know, you deserve it. You know? <laughs> money makes the world go round. Yeah. You have to make it somehow. So you might as well make it doing something you enjoy doing. Exactly. Right? Yeah. Well, I feel very empowered <laughs> to go and start up my laptop right now and make a website. Yeah. No, it's actually surprisingly easy. And I will say, I, I want I want to like check if it's still going on, but. I don't mind what I'm saying. It doesn't matter. Ah, just just click the link. It's really cheap. Ah. Here, so check that out. Again, not sponsored. Literally just trying to help some people out. Um, but yeah, thank you. I guess any more questions before we end this off? Are you, are you pretty like ready to start your online business? I'm ready to go. <laughs> I okay. feel like I know what to do now. Thank you so much. Amazing. No, my pleasure. And also thank you all for watching. Uh, yeah. It's been a pleasure. Uh, thank you, Astrid, for being here. Of course. Uh, on our very first episode of Fast Fashion. Yay. And if you enjoyed this, make sure to like, uh, comment, and subscribe. And uh, I'll see you next time. We're going to be doing some more videos like this. And maybe you'll see Astrid again soon. So, oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. And I'm on Instagram. Shop by cash. Look at that. And Astrid's also on Instagram. Yep. At Sedgvik, S-E-D-G-V-V-S. We'll, we'll put it right there, yeah. <laughs> okay, thanks again. Bye. Have a good one, guys. Bye.